forget it. So yeah, this chapter is all about matrix and other areas. I have started a bit with like the learning objective. Um, like the first part, I changed it a bit, some part from the book, like I reorganized it a bit. Uh, even if I was like the common operations is a bit a, a typo here that I will need to correct. But uh, finally, I made this is this this own part. Um, what the first part is what is the matrix and an array for R, or to create convert them. This is what we're gonna see: matrix and array manipulation and matrix algebra. Scope it. Okay. This is like, and um, yeah, what's matrix and array? It's S three all the way. <laughs> So the previous chapter was very useful because at the end of the day, uh, giving it a, a generic vector, a dim attributes, it's deep, it's gonna be a matrix. And here you see it have it's so it's gonna like I don't remember like was it overload? No, it will dispatch to the correct uh print function that will print it nicely like here. I should probably like open. Yeah, I have one open here. <clears throat> we should probably work so on the same way. Gonna check here and let's be curious if I print default A. Oh no, still the same. So I guess I don't know what, how it works, but it does not dispatch to the correct uh the the structure version. Uh but yeah, it's just a structure with a dim and the dim attribute is a special attribute that's make it. Uh, if I check a class here, yeah, it's a matrix, an array. So we see what the matrix is. Uh, the question is, what's an array? Well, an array is just like uh, a one dimension. I mean, it's no, not necessarily one dimension, but the matrix is a 2D array. If you are dealing with an array that's have like, let's say here, six dimension or one dimension or seven dimension, it's going to be uh, an array. Matrix is just 2D uh, array. Which is like, um, and behind the scene, this is just the vector one to six here. This is like fairly important because on the end indexing part, you are kind of indexing like a data frame, but you can also indexing like a vector, a name vectors, which will come later, which is super tricky by the way. Okay, it's not just numeric here if, um, oh, by the way, it seems like I'm not familiar, but the author used like the, the syntaxes, uh, matrices should be capitalized. I think it's come back from maths and it's, I think it's good practice, uh, to have like some kind of logic while you name stuff. So, uh, now that I, I didn't know that. So I will try to follow that now when I use the matrix, um, I will capitalize stuff. So here, okay, it can be it can be like a logical here if you like um, check if it's uh, higher or equal to three for my a, it will return like false true, false true. It can be a character. Yeah, this is just an example, and this I didn't know. It can also be um, a list, uh, and those are like emphasize like certain elements are not displaying correctly. But if you check the objects, they are still here. So I guess if we do that, where's my uh, terminal? Let's see, maybe we have more logs than print default. Um, and I will do like the weird operators. Yeah, why? Bob. And if I do Bob, um. Well, I guess I go a bit like, uh, I can do, do that should work, no? Here, we have the list. <clears throat> so even if like it just display list, list to three, does not mean like the list that we created here is absent. Well, it's it's widely named list, but that's work. Okay. Internally, elements are in column measure style. Even if you weirdly like write this one, and specify the by row. I will I will um, go like with the matrix different between matrix and array a bit later, like in the next uh, section. 
uh, they are store, uh, they are organized uh, in a column measure way. So if you do like that, it's look like they are like on the row one, two, three, four, five, six. But if you check behind the scene, it's just one, four, two, five, six, uh, three, six. It's just a way of printing it, which is like kind of tricky. A cool tip that I didn't know and that we're gonna use letters is uh, you can name din dimension name. <laughs> which is weird, but that's allow you, for example, to have like this kind of contingency table where row is A and B and colon is A, B, C. So the dimension name is A, B, C and A, B, but you can also name them. So the dimension are just two and three, two and three, but you can also name them. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And uh, next in the chapter, it will be useful. And it's also like, yeah, just a neat way of presenting it. Any question? To sum it up. Um, that makes sense to me. I thought that I didn't know that thing about um, how you can turn a list into a matrix either and have different data types, like if the list has different data yeah. classes. And I, I thought that was unusual. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but. Um, I, I don't know either. I think like list is sufficient enough. Yeah. Like, you know, in, yeah. in some way. Um, but then that makes sense because like in data frame, you can have list column. Yeah. And list mm -hmm. is a basic mm -hmm. data type. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's one of the data type that are like, um, yeah, one, it's not a compound data type. So mm -hmm. you can use yeah. it as a basic brick, let's say. Yeah. So it makes sense. I don't know if I gonna use it once I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, no. Like this, this, this I will definitely maybe use it. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice. Or, I don't know if there are any uh, functions that can take a table that's formatted like that and and generate like LaTeX or something from it. That would be really cool. I think they um, exist. Yes. Yeah, for that. Must I don't exist. know them, but yeah. like because like what we're gonna see is table or tabulate is generating yeah. contingency table. Yeah. I I touch that letters, so we can have this discussion at that time. They can be created by the, uh, so let's add, how we create, I mean, maybe put that here. Nope, Shira. Uh, um, they can be created by um, two function, array or matrix. And they are a bit different, like array is taking a vector usually, a dimension, which you can specify, or if not, it will be the, the length of the vector. Should be like, I should have changed vector here. And you can, uh, by default, dim name is null, but you can specify it, as we have seen like previously uh, here. And dim name is here. So, um, okay. And then you have like matrix, which is the one that I I never use nearly like the this array one. I mostly use ma the matrix one. Which can specify like you take a vectors and it's by it can specify the number of row, the number of colon. By default, it's by row, but you can also change it to be by colon. And the same dim name is optional and set up to null by default. Like when you set up an attribute by null, it does not exist. So it makes sense. You can also create them by binding colon or binding row. Like, so this is like nothing really like a new. And if you have like, you, you probably have used that for data frame. Uh, the famous do call row bind a list or do call combine a list is something like we have seen already in the, the book. So I'm not going too much into it. One stuff that I learned is like, be careful. Like if you are um, do calling, let's say with a, a colon binding, but we do not have the same numbers of row, it's gonna recycle, which is kind of tricky. <laughs> I don't know if I want that, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do that once, or I will, I will. I mean, I guess if you want to do it correctly, you probably need to do like some kind of join if you want to colon bind. And if you row bind, I don't know what kind of behavior you want, but like by default, we use a recycling rule, which is kind of like, yeah, that's why I'm saying be careful. Oh. Uh, I mean, yeah, the simplified two arrays. 
Why I, did he use Ducal? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Like, why, what What was the advantage in the of using Ducal instead of just calling C-bind or R-bind? I couldn't figure it out in the book. I didn't... Uh, and... the, uh, so he gave an example, like, uh, I think, do we have keep it here? No, I didn't keep it here. But sometimes if you're like... So one of the examples is like, if you have a list, for example, do call with com do call with take the combine and the list. I will return you a matrix on mm -hmm. array, mm -hmm. and okay. the same with all bind. So one okay. example, like if you are just calling it like on the, um, let's say like one matrix and one vector, it does not make very sense. Like you are just calling it on two elements, but if you have multiple elements that store into a list, it will work also with do call. I see. Okay. Hmm. So, Always returns a matrix. Okay, I see. It's better than okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, yeah, that's something. Like, if I I need to do, I will definitely need to check because, like, this yeah. is like some weird gotcha where you know. Yeah. You get. You get yeah. Simplify to array is nice. Um. So you take a list of vector of thing length, and it's gonna return like a correct object. Mm -hmm. By the way, it just do uh, s apply if you check it like um, uh, blah, 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 blah. if you check quickly it's you're gonna see it. So it's just doing like well a bunch of check um <clears throat> and then where is it the apply? Here, it's do a L apply. It's also do it another play, and then uh, it's gonna do, 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 do. Uh, um, uh, S apply. No, it's S apply. That's it's S apply with uh, L apply plus simplify to R. Mm. I was incorrect. So this is yeah. Make more sense. I remember this one. So just literally, I'll apply what well, x function, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah. And you're passing the, all the argument from for the function, and then you simplify to array. Um, the author likes go a bit into like explaining the difference between this this uh, simplify to R or do call with the combine and robine, and uh, personally, like I didn't bother make test saying like which one was the fastest. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any big differences, but yeah. Well, and then you can supply with the, the classic uh, structure of it. You can like create a small function that's going to return like a contingency table, which is kind of nice. And you can like, mm -hmm. right? Then um, you can also use table or tabulate that create contingency table, which is I didn't know behind the scene when matrix or I classes. So to sum it up, uh, you can create from scratch. You can just combine or rebind some of them. Use do call with a list of vector. Simplify to our work also. Like boss can probably do the same, but in a different way. Yeah. Uh, because like simplify to our if you provide a list with different kind of length, it's gonna it's gonna return a list. Mm -hmm. Uh, without like so, the return is six is like it does not even pro, uh give you a warning. It just like throw you give you back the list. So if you are doing it, you kind of need to test it. Oh, uh, well, you failed. Uh, matrix and array manipulation. What you know on indexing on data frame works here. Like we haven't seen data frame, <laughs> but uh, all you know um. Works. So let's get a quick book example. The matrix here, just regular matrix. Um, here we name it, so it's it's nicer. Here it's an example. If I want the third row, it works. If I want the second column, it works. So I provide just a simple indexes. It works also with the D name. Then it returns one cell. I I call that cell. I don't know if it's the correct word. One element into the elements, probably like the best way. Mm -hmm. And by default, I wanted two. Drop is set to true in the um, in the indexes in the index function. So if I want to return an array, I need to set it to false. 
If not, it's going to return a vector of length one, or as no as in other languages as a scalar, but scalar does not exist. So, so yes, and the author spend a lot of time complaining about it, and I think he's right. <laughs> <laughs> the default should be false. I mean, should be should be this one. Yeah, I, it, I agree it, with that. It should then drop the. Yeah. You should get back the same type. Yeah, that you are passing to the function. Yes, behind the scene, it is just a vector. So this was mind blowing for me. If you, unlike a data frame, where like if you have a data frame and you pass it just a, a vector, it's gonna return like the tenth one, which is like uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, it's probably not this one then. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, this mm -hmm. one. Um, so that's the six. So no, I'm incorrect. It's column wise. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> uh, yes. So this works. So because remember at the beginning, we have seen like matrix and array are just big vectors with a dimension and dimension can be multiple. I mean, can be like a bunch of stuff. Usually like we work with two dimension, but we're going to see. Uh, it's going to be more selecting by sub matrices. This was cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, don't I didn't know, know you could uh, do that. I didn't, I had never thought about doing that. Um, I, I'm not going to like go too much into it, but you can select on two column numeric, which on 2D matrices is going to re uh, return you the basically like it will assume like the, this is basically the indexes uh, that you want on the 2D. And I imagine if you like, for example, have a 3D array, if you use a three column numeric matrix, it will probably return you uh, the cell of the element in the 3D or 4D or 5D, mm -hmm. which is nice. Uh, in my work, you kind, of you kind of want that in special era with points or, is, or with like stuff like that. So that's why I use the coordinates ID, I think. And it choose an index on row colon and return individual cell matching to coordinates. So, uh, yeah, I think it's useful um, because, like, it's going to return you. And it's going to simplify also on the same way. It's going to return a vector. If you are providing, like, uh, a 2D matrices to index your uh, matrices, it's going to return the individual that match. I should maybe take, should have taken an example, which work here also. Another way of producing it, if you want to return like this, for example, 2D matrices, this is a good example. Uh, you can use which and ask to return the indexes R dot in stand for R indexes. And it's going to return the indexes. Uh, so where A greater than seven, and it's going to return like it's row three colon one, and it's returned like the indexes that you want. And then you can use that uh, on your matrices to get the individual you want. So there's probably some stuff to do with it, but um, yeah. Yeah, which it's behind the scenes because which is targeting the logical vectors. Mm -hmm. And it probably have a method for it anyway. So I, I found it cool, but I don't know like if I will ever use it outside of the 2D matrices. But yeah, <clears throat> this, I'm going to use it. <laughs> yeah. Higher dimensional array, most, and on my work, it's mostly known as contingency table. Uh, and you can generate them by table. But here you have like one that's famously now, it's a titanic data set. And I didn't know it was one of them. And usually, like I remember in every tutorial, you kind of do as data frame, mm -hmm. and you convert it back to a data to a data frame with like the um, the the stuff. Like we can see it, it's probably like um, as data frame Titanic. It's like that. Usually, you convert it to this mm -hmm. format, so you have everything like nice and tidy. I would say. Like yeah. with the class, the seg, the chill for every possible. But by definition, like I was surprised to know, like it's it's 
it's a multidimensional mm -hmm. array, as you see here, kind of. It's displaying every every uh -huh. category. Uh, so I found it very cool, um, and also like uh, the author mentioned, it's I, I made him name it like a typo here. So it's a dimension named. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like um, that's why like Titanic first smell mm -hmm. and drop works. I can do it here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, if I don't drop, it will just return like the. Uh, it it has dimension, it has dimension name, but the dimension name are named also. That's why, like, you have the sex uh, here, and then you go like the sex is male, and the class is here. The category is first, and you get one hundred eighty-eight, which is kind of. Cool. And if I don't, if I if I remove the the drop here. I just use the regular one. It just returns the number. So that's that's the same idea. Like you kind of like have a 4D matrices, and then you specify the coordinates you want. And instead of specify the coordinates you want by the um, by the numbers, I mean it's probably gonna work. Like I have no idea of it, so I, I'm gonna go one 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 because I don't know exactly how they are. And because I want, I'm kind of curious to what I get. I'm going to ask for the uh, false. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think there's a period after the, oh, one, yeah. after the last one. Yeah. This one is incorrect. Here it get me like, so wow. it's apparently zero. <laughs> I don't know what the... uh, Oh, it's age, child, and survived. No, apparently they all survived, the, the, the kids. On the first class, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's in two D, so it can only represent like two stuff, but then it mm -hmm. represents that way. Okay, so this is uh, you. You said you wanted to use it. Yeah, I'm curious because I I find this more confusing of a representation than a, a uh, data frame I, representation. I'm just gonna always use it in two D contingency table. Mm, okay, okay. I think yeah. I will. I mean. Maybe there's some cases where I will want a third dimension of at yeah. even force, like force is basically mean like I have sex and classes that are supposed mm -hmm. to be here, then I have chilled and survive that are not represented. Mm -hmm. What? I think like this. Yeah, it, would, it, it is pretty cool with the named. Yeah, yeah, like this is very useful, like to mm -hmm. go very fast, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that I just want the, um, yeah, I probably does not want the. I want to remove that way. Oh, why? Oh, yeah, I went too much here. Yeah, I probably want it that way. Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, it's it's super fast. Like, um, but yeah, most of the time I work with contingency table that are two D. Uh, so just the two fir the first two um dimension work on my uh, indexing. Mm -hmm. Or just with name will work too, but uh, yeah, I think this is this is useful. This is what I'm named. It work with empty space, and it provide you just what you want. And then like I don't know, it's probably like here. I can just see if it works. Or well, very quick, yeah, <laughs> straight oh, out of the box. I'm not saying cool. it's visualization, mm. but that's work. Mm. That is pretty cool. So, oh, I got a warning. Oh, it's because like probably does not like me uh, going like to um, Radian probably does not like me uh, you opening um, uh, uh, the graphics. Yeah, uh, the graphic uh, engine behind it. But yeah. Okay. Do you some question uh, about this? I mean, to me, this if I need to re remember one stuff from this chapter, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be this uh, contingency table, our matrices, and then uh, all of the stuff we learned previously work on them. Like the, it's just a vector, so use them as a vector, and you can index that way. This is the most important uh, stuff. And yeah, the rest I, is... I think, 
I find it confusing that every every dim name is a column in the data frame except for frequency. Like if you go if you turn it to a data frame, the final column that has the oh yeah this one you mean has the yeah yeah, yeah the, like the frequency becomes a column, but then if you if you just look at the dim names, I mean I don't uh, know. that uh, so get s three method no is my guess oh yeah mm. uh get s three method uh this is as data frame and this is um matrix let's see okay now we have it so this is the ones probably running behind the scene no yeah so where is freck here So you take the dim, it would it get the number of front number of colon. Where is frequent freak here? I don't see it. So it's maybe not this one. Where is freak? I mean maybe it's in some other function that's called in this function. Let's see, let's see if it's just let's see if I just do as that uh, frame, but I think as uh, that frame is probably gonna return. Yeah, it's yeah. method. So maybe it's array oh. first. Do I have the freak somewhere? Because it need to name to name. It's come from somewhere. No. Yeah. Yeah. So X rename optional. I don't know. Or yeah. is it inside of the object that I'm missing it? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think Let's so. see structures of the object. It's a good question. Well, I don't know. I mean it's not important, but I, I just I just was curious about uh, No, the, the number here, like the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is what it's converted to freck. Mm. But where yeah. it's down, it's done yeah. somewhere. Uh, and it's probably this one or the other one. I don't see where it's defined. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised uh, when you when you called it that it came out as pretty as a data frame when when you you didn't do it. It's definitely. Um, Right, let's 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 check. Let's go slowly. So class. So it's a class. Titanic. Oh, oh, table. It's a table. Hey, uh, you're gonna see it. <laughs> uh. And Frank is defined here. <laughs> nice. So oh. it's a table. And you can specify it also. Mm -hmm. See, you can probably like change yeah. it. So, uh, if I go back here, where is it? As data frame. Let's test it. Response name Bob. <laughs> yep. So we confirm like this is this. Okay. Uh, so it's have, it can take a response name, um, uh, string as factor equal true, which is mm have -hmm. not been corrected everywhere into R because you know, like no in data frame, uh, string as factors is by default false. And apparently here it's still um for this method, it's still true. Um I see. I mean, it's funny. Like, if you call, if you just do as dot matrix Titanic, the magic is just, just here, like expand yeah. grid. Yeah. This is the magic, like using expand grid on all the possibility. And then the freck, where is it? No. I probably need to run it slowly to see. Do we have time yeah. or? It, I'm. I think it's fun, but it's up to everybody else. I yeah. Do you do you want us to spend a bit time on that? To 
I think I need to step back for a second. What, what, what is a table versus a matrix in R? I think I've confused myself. Yeah, that's I a good know. question. I, I don't know what a table is. I've never, I've never encountered a table. Well, this but look, is the... it's funny if you call as dot matrix on Titanic, it's just a, a, a one column matrix. Yeah, because it's uh, a vector. The numbers. Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. a vector, and then uh, and then everything else is uh, dim names. Which I don't know. I think is is kind of funny. Let's see if Google have me something table function. Probably bad, but does not give you anything. What we should check is as character. No. Oh yeah. Uh, so we'll know was it uh, here. Mm. If okay, let's go a bit into this rabbit hole. <laughs> so get. Uh, let's see, as uh, table, no? Default or as table? Let's see as table first. <laughs> uh, how do you rem default, no? I don't know. Okay, take X, which is not defined, a certain number of <laughs> well, <laughs> I like this check. If it is, it's return <laughs> <laughs> this one is not very useful mm. if it is an array or a numeric uh, it's converted to an array mm -hmm. with the structure uh, of table mm. and provide die name I don't know what provide die name is yeah, okay. so it's only work on array apparently mm. Let's we can test that. Um, um, cannot coerce to table, yeah. So it's apparently a class that have been done on top of array or numeric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can test that also. Um, yep. And weirdly, it named it AB. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that came from. Maybe provide the name. I think I think that's what it is. I think it it, it names every dimension automatically. And it, it forces every dimension to have a character. Let's be a name. bit weird. Increase. Provide the name apply to non array. But it's, oh, because it's convert here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where is it? As array work. Yeah, like I, I just did, I did it and it, it just named it. A, B, C, D, E. And yeah. after I go, A, yeah. 1, B, 1, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. That's okay. Strange. What do you think that, that old class is doing in the structure for uh, as table? Yeah. Well, for some, it seems like it wants to keep a record of what it used to be. Oh, it's good. It's have a primitive old classes. So we probably not be able to check it. Mm. It's probably checking like, is it? It's probably like the function that do also like the, you know, like for example, when you have like class, uh, one three. Oh, sorry, one three. It's an integer, mm -hmm. so it's probably return the type of in some way, mm -hmm. because like. Class by default, the type of is written by class, but I don't remember like the correct mechanism, but yeah. So we get it. So the rabbit hole for like um, mm -hmm. track is because a contingency table is converted as a table, which basically converted to an array if it's not and providing name. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, X, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't mention tables. 
Because that feels like something that you would care about, but uh, yeah. Unless I just missed it, but anyway. So it was interesting. So yes, it's a bunch of S3 methods that are chained to produce that. Yeah. Titanic. Because cool. yeah, it's a, like the structure of it is just a table. Oh, it's a table here. Mm -hmm. It looks like table comes up in the, he's talking about the S3 class yeah. table in uh, the next chapter in data frames. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So it's gonna, we're gonna see it. But yeah, mm. like yeah, pretty straightforward cool. cuts, no? Yeah. The as default, and then it probably have a, like, uh, I never know like how you can check all the method associated with the, um, get... Oh, actually one of the exercises in this chapter two, 11.8, it uh, basically makes you recreate table. Okay, yeah. so. Although that's not the class, that's the, uh, I think the function. Uh, I don't remember how you you list all the t how, how do you list all the method associated with the a class? Anyway, not not for today. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a, so if you are pissed by the frequencies, you can change it. <laughs> At least because it's not a frequency, no. Mm -hmm. It's an occurrence. Yeah, it's like here. the it's the it's like n or or yeah. yeah. It's it's a number yeah. of folk yeah. that die. I think no. Yeah. So oh, I thought like... it was the number of that, like combination of yeah. I mean, it's the combination of the all those dimensions that exist in the data set. Yeah. Here, for example, like uh, survived no. That's mean like one hundred eighty women. No, male adult of the first class did not survive. Yeah. Uh, and see, all the kids survived, but there were a few in the first class. There are five of them. Anyway, Titanic data, data set. Let's go a bit like on the next stuff. Common operation. I <laughs> say common, I put like kind of like. Um, can I see it? Show it here. Yeah. I put common into quote because like it's not like you use them all the time. Uh, you can transpose uh, a matrix, which is fairly straightforward and useful, I guess. Um, one good example I could see like, yeah, there's plenty of good example where you want that, but especially on the contingency table, if you want to go fast, um, you can do aggregate with apply and we're gonna probably see it in data frame because that's the same logic. Um, yeah, what I didn't know and I want to highlight is like, usually you do apply on one and two, which is for row and columns, but it can be expanded. It's not the, the right term, but if you want, you can also apply yeah. first, you can combine them and, and, and add more dimension. And you can also like, just, uh, go with the first one and the third one or the third and the fourth. Mm -hmm. And then you apply the function, which also you can define your own function if you want. I didn't go too much into that. Uh, yeah, useful stuff, but like, I mean, we're probably gonna use apply a lot in the data frame chapters. So I, I guess it's just an introduction. Um, binary operators, that kind of funny. So, I mean, array times array do an element wise operation. I think this was expected, like a vector time a vector do the element wise also operation. An array times the scalar is the scalar is recycled, which also was expected. The weird one is this one, uh, array time vector. The only tricky one, it, it's worked by recycling, but com column wisely. <laughs> so yeah, I create I create one like one like I just take the example from the book, and. To me, it's not column wisely, but I maybe missed something. Oh, because it's by royal to yeah. I don't know. Let me let me check that if I do the change. So it's column wisely, but behind the scene. Okay. 
one, three, four. Okay, sure. Then B times combine. Oops, sorry. Let's do something big. I don't understand it, but yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's weird. This is so. Yeah, I see. Okay. It, yeah. it has probably go like because like it probably have went uh, vector wise. So, um, if I as numeric, numeric, numeric B. Yes, that makes sense. And times one one hundred, I'm probably gonna get the same result. Yeah. So yes, you you really need we really need to keep in mind like behind the scene, this is just a freaking vectors. Mm -hmm. No offense to vector, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So the but yeah, the R R R scalar, but just like be mindful of the R vector one, which I don't. Yeah, it can come like I guess when you are like doing operation on it. And then I didn't go into like the rest of the chapter on the algebra. You will not. It's too hard. But um, I guess the only one useful is probably the mul matrix multiplication, which is like this weird uh, symbol. I didn't know about cross prod, nether t cross prod. Um, but yeah, I'm maybe the only one. Like it's gonna be useful, like all of that. Like for example, here you can set up, like, you can specify like the, the distances between the elements. Here I use an Euclidean one. I know like you can use like, for example, the Jacobian, like there's multiple distance that you can use. Uh, but yeah, and eight and eight and values and eight and vectors are used in PCA principal component analysis. Yeah. This is basically what he's doing here, is like making a PCA by hands, which I never have done, and displaying how to do it, <laughs> which is kind of cool, but like uh, will require me more time. Thankfully, there are plenty of packages for that. Yeah, there are packages for that, but still. I guess it makes sense to use it sometimes. I mean, you know, it's I'm, kind of one. I'm good without that. Yeah, I think I'm good too, but like sometimes I want to spend more time on it. But yeah, that's it. So uh, to sum it up, um, I will say, yeah, like most stuff that I want to remember is probably just um, matrix and array are vector with a dimension attribute. So when you do operation on top of it, think of it of doing operation on the vectors. And then after that, it's just the printing stuff. And then I like the, um, the contingency table, which is now we know is a table <laughs> on top of the um, matrix, uh, just array, by the way. I don't mm -hmm. think it's matrix. Yeah. Uh, and then you can do neat, like, nice selection on top of it. That's my my go to go on the chapters. Do you have other stuff to add? Yeah. I think I think that's that's good. I think uh, I also like the contingency table. I don't know if I'll use it instead of just using data frames, but I I you know I think it is kind of cool. I, th I thought that the mate the subsetting by a matrix was cool, even though I don't think I would ever use that. I thought that was clever. Uh, I but... think it's 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 useful. I have no use right now, but I yeah. think I, at one time we'll need to use it in some um, you know, uh, for example, sometimes you do some intersection uh, in a special place, mm. and intersect, and an intersect is basically uh, it. You have like A and B. And A and B can be multiple polygons or shape. And you can ask whether or not they are intersecting. And it's mm -hmm. what it's going to return you, it's going to return you a gigantic matrix uh, with uh, all the elements of A and all the elements of B. And does they intersect? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It can be more complicated because like you have category of intersection, like are they like totally like overlapping, not overlapping, just touching, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's and then by using that you can just return like the coordinate of it. So it's it's kind of mm-hmm. I kind of see some some place where it's useful, but I agree with you, like no, the contingency table is because like sometimes you just have a big data frame or some and you just want to check like the, the counts of something over something. Mm-hmm. And you just run table yeah. and it's just return you. But then table, you can like tune it a bit more that I was never tuning it it's too much. Mm-hmm. That no, I will maybe try to add like a better like way of providing it. That's a good point. Is it better than a data frame? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, but I think it's yeah, it's a good point. It's worth knowing and, and looking for uses. Yeah. For but yeah. and it's it's probably like it's worse also because like if you don't know what kind of object it is, like the previous I saw I I kind of think also it was an example of the previous chapters. Mm. Where yeah. if you don't know it's an S3 method and it dispatch uh, to specific function, mm-hmm. you can't understand what happened. Yeah. Because like you apply the logic of a data frame, which is 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 nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, I agree. Like it's not like the most productive chapter. Yeah. Unlike you are, except if you are interested in matrix algebra. And, and well, yeah, maybe, maybe it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I liked it though. And thank you for doing it, even though it was a yeah. hard chapter. <laughs> uh, Sha. Uh, is it Sha? Do I pronounce it correctly? Yeah, it's Sha. Uh, do, will you come next next week or? Yeah, I will join. Okay, you haven't joined it. <laughs> like I recommend you like going through other the other chapter are probably more inter- like depending on what interests you, but other chapter are probably more fruitful. Okay. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will check the pin post if I can sign up for something. Sure. Uh, yeah, I will, I will check that. I You're was, welcome. I was just learn, looking at my uh, schedule for the next week and thinking that maybe I'm going to try to pawn off the data frame chapter somewhere else. So if Corey or Shaw, you're interested in doing it, let me know, because uh, I think I have a lot of work to do for my work. work I, job. I think this chapter should be split. OK. Yeah, I think we should yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly. Talk about I'm kind it. of. Uh, in one point, I don't want to split the chapters because, like, yeah, I want you know it's good to complete a, a book. <laughs> but in another point, like if I like if some chapter need to be split, I think this one need to be split, and we can take your time doing it. I think. Yeah, that's that's good. I'll I'll look into that and uh, maybe we'll. Yeah, I might be able to do. Maybe I can do this next one. We'll see. I okay. Yeah. Well, you tell me, I will prepare. I will prepare a bit anyway. Okay, so great. I will yeah, try I'll to do exercise do and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, that'd be great. And then um, I think also, Corey, have you have you been putting your previous chapters up on the? Uh, I I did the first couple, but I I have fallen behind. Okay. So. Yeah, I have not done my chapters um, the proper uploading. So maybe Corey and I should should try. Yeah, to we should do that. that. Yeah. Yeah, John is super helpful in case you are like having trouble um but yeah uh, i will i will um i will upload mine i uploaded like the one from nine i also upload some exercise mm. uh, if you check into the github repo i add them into like exercise mm-hmm. something oh. i should add more like but uh just me like doing them and 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 yeah. put them into like the same place because like weirdly i i started doing some in another repository for whatever reason <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, just uh, yeah Okay. Well, thanks everyone. And see you next week. I will gonna tap for John and end. <laughs> Thank you.